Georges Etienne Cartier was born in Saint Antoine sur Richelieu in 1814. He was born to a family of merchants in the uh, agricultural sector. Uh, he was the seventh child of eight. At the age of 10 years old, he came to Montreal with his uh, one of his brothers to uh, go to the College of Montréal, so to be instructed by the Sulpicians. He studied there for a few years, and the contacts, the friendships that he made at that time stayed with him all his life. He passed the bar in 1835. He got interested in different things, uh, commerce, real estate. He got involved with the Patriots, and he was in, uh, involved in different events in the 18, 1837, 1838. It's only in 1848 that he decided to actively become involved in politics. The 1840s and the 1850s, United Canada was a colony. And Great Britain had put together Canada East, what is now Quebec, and Canada West, what is now Ontario. They brought them together saying, this is United Canada. So you had people from different backgrounds, different territories, different religions, different languages that had to come together and there were a lot of clashes going on. It was really difficult to make everyone agree on any number of subjects. And it was in the 1860s that some of them started thinking that they did have things in common, even if it wasn't they had different religions, if you, even if they had different languages, that they did have things in common. And that's how together they started talking about Confederation. In 1864, uh, the different British colonies in North America started talking, thinking about a confederation, a unification of all those different British colonies. And there was a meeting in Charlottetown for the maritime uh, colonies. Georges Etienne Cartier came to Charlottetown with George Brown, Johnny MacDonald, uh, with a ship full of bottles of champagne to help uh, the talks, of course. And what he wanted, he was really instrumental in bringing about Confederation. His role is mainly to have thought of a level of government where the different regions of Canada would still have their local interests met. For him, having the provinces was a way for Quebec to still have a place and have a level of government where they were in majority and they could decide for themselves what was good for them. Some of the legislations that he brought about, we still live with today. Uh, for example, the abolition of the seigneurial, seigneurial system, uh, the civil code in Quebec, which is not the same as the rest of Canada. He also brought about schools for teachers. Uh, that was very important. We don't have any writings. We don't have a personal diary that says of everything, but we have an object. We have the personal watch, pocket watch of Georges Etienne Cartier. And when it was opened, we found inside an image of the Sacred Heart. So knowing that a pocket watch is something that was very important, very symbolic, that you always kept close to you, you can just extrapolate and maybe think that on the personal side, on the private side, his faith was very important for him. After the death of Georges Etienne Cartier, Johnny MacDonald said, if it had not been for Georges Etienne Cartier, there would not have been a confederation because he was really, a, like he said, a lion that pushed everything, that pushed the talks. The strength with which he brought about his idea can really be an inspiration to Canadians even today because he wanted to share his ideas. We now have a new exhibition in uh, Sir Georges Etienne Cartier National Historic Site that asks Canadians to do that, to imagine a country and to share their ideas with others. You can tell them, you can share them, think of that ideal country, imagine a country and share it with others.